Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another video on my thoughts concerning the Goldie's M&M Smoker. Now, two videos have come out on that smoker in this last week. One was from Jerby's Barbecue Channel, and the other was from Ant's um, Barbecue Channel. And uh, yeah, they're both about that smoker. Uh, Jerby was just going through, he, he drew a diagram. Uh, an ant apparently actually visited Goldie's and got, they had a cook and he showed, shows the cook. Um, so if you haven't watched those videos, do. Uh, they're very interesting, informative, but I'm going to make some commentary on what I saw there. Just as I'm trying to uh, figure out from this evidence how well this, this new smoker work, we got a price. So that's uh, exciting. Right. The one thing that stood out to me sort of on the engineering side is the possibility of a hot spot still in this smoker. Right. So the claim is that you can cook from end to end on the grate. But um, there were a couple things in these videos that made me think that maybe that isn't entirely true. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that we have enough data really to say entirely one way or the other. But a couple things stood out to me. One was Jerby saying that the sweet spot is in the middle of the smoker, uh, basically where the door is. So that leaves about four inches on either side that maybe are not as usable. Uh, even though he says regularly that they put turkeys all the way across and sort of as they shrink, uh, you know, gather them to the middle. Another thing was that when uh, Jerby and Ant were doing their cook, they left a very specific part of the smoker open. And you can see it in this photo, kind of like a, like a lane right there where the, the smoke enters in, in that pipe in the initial uh, elbow, right? So you have that heat coming into the smoker right there. And it occurs to me that maybe that is a place that you want to leave open. Uh, so, you know, then it's a question of, is this a hot spot? You know, I suppose you really wouldn't want to have like something pushed right up against that hole to sort of be blocking it uh, and the, the smoke and air, hot air coming in. That could be bad because the, the grate goes like right up to that hole. If, if that is a hot spot, maybe it's, it, it really has to be, you know. I, I can't imagine a world wherein the, the direct heat of the fire coming through that pipe wouldn't create a hot spot. But is it, if, it, if there is, you know, the, a hot spot there, is, is that less than in other smokers? And if you think about it being like the first quarter at least that you can't use, or the first third, maybe that is still true, right? It's gonna be really interesting once people start getting these smokers. You know, I, I looked on Eminem's website and Goldie's, and I didn't see a place for a list yet or a place that you could sign up. So, um, but when, when these smokers get out into people's hands, it's going to be interesting to see what actually uh, happens for that. And, and what the general consensus becomes with their use. Now, some of the most interesting evidence that we got from Ant's video was how the edges of the pork belly and the thin side of the ribs did not crisp. So that was something that they pointed out uh, very specifically. Uh, why did, did that happen that way? Um, is that due to a gentler heat? Is that elbow, you know, that hot air is coming around that elbow, is that kind of slowing it down or swirling it more? Um, you know, so I was thinking about what causes that crisping uh, on corners like that in the first place. Generally, I, you know, it would be because uh, the, the blast of heat, I guess, would be so intense you know, the thicker part could take it, but the thinner part couldn't. 
So how is this smoker making it so that you don't have that intense blast? Is, um, is that a product from uh, the radiant heat from the fire, which you're not getting in this Goldie smoker? Is that why those, those edges crisp? Um, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with that myself in, in my cooks. I don't know if that's because uh, I never cook usually on that side of the offset smoker. Um, it, it was an interesting phenomenon, in, interesting results, um, but I don't know exactly what they mean. Maybe somebody else who's more knowledgeable or has more experience with that could say, um, you know, but it was very interesting. And, and they did put the ribs right up to the exit um, exhaust pipe. So also interesting. So uh, the one thing about the exit exhaust is it's got to be pulling the, the smoke and heat closer together. So I was wondering, is that another potential hot spot? Uh, and is that why Derby was saying that the sweet spot is in the middle, you know, where all the, the gases and heat have expanded the most? Um, and if so, why wouldn't they have designed maybe a conical end um, for, you know, and it's uh, with those elbows, it's, it could be difficult to do that. Um, but I wonder if more tinkering on the design could uh, make uh, for an even better product. So those are my thoughts on Smoker. Another thing that stood out to me was the comparison that Jerby makes to other pits, um, especially concerning the price. Uh, 4250, I believe, is what it was. Um, and he compared it, Jerby did, to the mill scale, the Aaron Franklin pit, and lastly, um, Chud's uh, 64 gallon pit. And the 64 gallon was the only one that was cheaper, but of course it's gonna be smaller, uh, which I think this is like 98 gallons for this new Goldie's one. Um, and then they compared the prices. I think the mill scale is somewhere around 5,000. The Aaron Franklin too, even though it's smaller than the mill scale. And then, you know, is that a competitive price? Um, the geography of all the, the, the pits that uh, he mentioned stood out to me. They're all made in Central Texas. Um, and I think M&M is there in Central Texas too. So of pits made there in Central Texas, uh, I think Goldie's pit maybe will stand out um, as a new option. But the one pit that I thought maybe should have been included but was not was the workhorse piss 1975 which i've talked about many many times on my shows uh i've kind of championed it as uh the standard uh for smokers you know that it sets the bar um and i know that jerby knows about it because he's talked about it with uh the mad scientist barbecue and in the interview with uh their barbecue class so we talked about uh, that pit versus the middle scale um, with Jeremy Oder so um, I, I do think that the rivalry that that may come about may be between uh, this new Goldie's pit and the workhorse pit uh, and taking over kind of that first place um, workhorse pits has had a meteoric rise in popularity since their inception. And uh, I think Goldie's Pit is gonna get a lot of traction here in a second in, in the marketplace. And I think that uh, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see whether this Goldie's Pit comes to prominence at the expense of workhorse pits, whether they're going to coexist, you know, peacefully in the marketplace, uh, what what is gonna happen? I don't know, but I do think that uh, the comparison between those two is is the right one 
uh, for a lot of people who are going to be looking to buy a fit, you know. One of the main differences between the two is the price. So the base model of the 1975 is uh, over $1,000 cheaper than this Goldie's. Um, and it has, uh, you can have the um, cowboy firebox in it. That doesn't seem to be possible in the Goldie's. So it's, it's really going to be interesting to see uh, where public opinion sort of lands between these two smokers. Which one is going to be the favorite? Which one's going to be better? Uh, and, and I don't really know. I think that Workhorse Pit still has a lot going for it. Um, even if, if this Goldie Smoker does turn out to be everything that they say it is, uh, which is completely possible. Um, so, and it may, it may be a very hard decision for some people looking to buy uh, a nice backyard offset. Um, and my last thought is that, uh, you know, I feel like barbecue is in good hands. Uh, just the whole um, Goldie's team and himself, you know, they, they seem like they're a younger generation coming in and taking the reins of barbecue. Uh, which gives me a lot of hope, right? It, it seems like there's there's progress being made. It's like barbecue is moving forward, uh, you know? Um, and Goldie's, they've done a lot to maybe make barbecue taste even better, make a better product. But here on, on the engineering side, which is part, part of what I, I'm most interested in. Um, it seems like things are moving forward as well, uh, which which is great. So you know, a younger generation coming up to to take the ball forward. I love it. Uh, I have a lot of enthusiasm and hope for the future of barbecue. So thank y'all, Goldies, and thank you, Ant, for doing that. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what's next. I look forward to seeing more evidence of how this Goldie's barbecue smoker works. Um, so, exciting times. And as always, uh, you know, go out, cook something outside, and get your smoke on.